everyone, welcome to another episode of Simply Heal. And today our topic is very festive. Yeah. All right, it's about alcohol, drinking moderately. How far can you go? And uh, together with me is Dr. Johnson, uh, who just confessed right before the show. When he was in college, uh, he drank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, everyone does. <laughs> all right. But uh, so for all the listeners out there, this is the d- definitive program for you today. You know, because dog is is. I always wonder, you know, when you drive down Christmas, the billboards say "drink responsibly." What yeah. does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> drink moderately yes some people's moderate is like 20 bottles right? <laughs> they can drink you under the table and they don't even turn red uh so today we're really going to answer what it is to drink uh moderately and responsibly and how far can you go before you hurt your liver and, and, and illnesses okay so um let me start with this statement first no let this be on the record on the record yeah there is no upper safety limit for alcohol drinking. Okay, so the safe uh, range for alcohol drinking is zero. Okay, okay? because yeah. why? Alcohol is carcinogenic. You only need one cell to mutate and replicate perpetually for you to get cancer. Okay, just one. All right. So there's no upper safety limit for alcohol drinking. But nevertheless, nevertheless, drink, okay? nevertheless we are all yeah. daredevils. <laughs> we all, okay. Yeah, we all love alcohol, right? So okay. what is moderate drinking? So for men, that is defined as two drinks on a single location. For women, it's one drink for one location. Okay. Okay. You know so, what? This is like this is how a person would cheat. Doc, you just said two glasses. <laughs> In a single location. So I will go to three locations <laughs> in one night. <laughs> okay, so, and also, what the hell is one drink? I mean, yeah, what, what is, is one drink? One drink. What okay? is one drink? So, take a look at this slide. So, ah, this, this slide, slide is how the American College of Lifestyle Medicine defines. defines one drink. Okay, so here we have different kinds of alcoholic beverages. You have your beer, mm-hmm. you have your liquor, you have, you have your wine, and you have your spirits. Okay, so for a beer, a regular, uh, a kind of beer, right? So with uh, around three to five percent uh, alcohol. alcohol per volume, that is one drink. Okay, one kind of uh, beer. Now, if you go to a higher proof, no, or a higher alcoholic, uh, like red horse, uh, like red horse, like red. then this goes uh, lower. Okay, so. Um, if uh, if we go to liquor, malt liquor, okay, so one glass is one drink, okay. So that's around seven percent alcohol. So it's just sort of like a what is malt liquor. Um, it's just a, a strong emperador or, or what? No, 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 no. Emperador or the brandy are spirits. spirits. Those okay. are spirits. Right. Malt liquor is um. What brand of malt liquor do we have? Brew kettle. A oh, brew kettle. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. The, uh, that, like Heineken. Stella, yeah. yeah Heineken, Heineken Stella that. Artois. Okay, okay. So those drinks. The slightly okay. more expensive beer is, yeah, is actually called malt liquor. Yeah. Okay. So take a look at the alcoholic percentage. Yeah, so 7%. Yeah. Oh, okay. 7%. So that's right. uh, one drink. Now let's go to wines. Oh, so wine. A glass of wine. So wines typically go to around 12%. Oh, uh, alcohol per volume, okay, so okay. or twenty-four proof. Okay, okay. So, um, if you drink a glass of wine, mm. this size, uh, this amount, so around five fluid ounces, so that's one drink. Okay, okay? and then this goes to a uh, fewer, fewer and fewer uh, amounts. So, if you go for spirits like your brandy, your scotch, your whiskey, then that would be around a shot glass. That's one drink. Just a shot drink. glass. So, if you have. Uh, uh, Wine glass, no? Uh, this uh, uh, yeah, like glass. that, that uh, yeah, that, for that, the that liquor. So that would be around um, a third of the glass. Ah, okay? no wonder you don't see anybody with a totally full cup of whiskey. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's always so, on the rocks and just yeah, like it's one on the rocks. Yeah, so if you watch a lot of movies, uh, yeah. you, you see these actors, yeah, they only put that amount of uh, uh, alcohol or that amount of spirits in, in the glass. So that's one drink. Okay, so moderate drinking is two drinks for men and one drink for women. Okay, so it's two drinks within a meal time. Yeah, that's true. Within the day, that's the whole day. day. Sorry, so that's the whole day. Whole right? day. Also, it's not you know it, it just you know in Philippines, <laughs> not we have breakfast, lunch, merienda, and 
dinner have, uh, and later yeah, yeah. and that. Okay, don't tell me that you have uh, three occasions. Ah, uh, you have your <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner at three occasions. No, 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 sorry, no. Sir. Okay. Whole day. That's a whole day. Two drinks okay. for men. Uh, one drink for women. Can, no, why? Why do women have a lower uh, al- yeah. allocation? Very good uh, question. It's because women have a higher body fat percentage than men. Oh. Alcohol is stored in the fats. Oh, alcohol is stored in the fats. Yeah. Low risk drinking is defined as this, this table. Okay. Wow, so, look at this. Very useful because yeah. it also has how many drinks per week? Per week and per, per day. Yeah, okay, so let's good. go for, to the uh, in a daily uh, basis first. So yeah. for men, you should not have more than four drinks. On any on any day, and for women, it's no more than three drinks. Okay, now, doc. Um, okay, I'm only drinking three drinks in a day, but I do it every day. Oh. Okay, am I still considered as uh, low risk drinking? No, because no. if you accumulate that, if you su- sum up that in a week's time, then you will be out of the low risk drinking. That's category. twenty-one. Yeah, that's twenty-one, 21 drinks glass. already in a yeah. week. So, if on on a weekly basis, no. Um, what we consider as low risk drinking is for men no more than fourteen drinks, and for women no more than seven drinks. So literally, okay. it's only like maximum two drinks a day. Yeah, maximum is already considered risky. It's just as low risk is fourteen cups mm-hmm. a week. Uh, in one day, do no more than four. So that's yeah. four cans of beer. Yeah. Four cans of beer. Four cans of beer. On maximum a- fourteen cans of beer a week. <laughs> a week. Yeah. Yeah. What about a month? A Should month? you drink like this every week? Should you do 14 cans every week? It's best to <laughs> do a bi-week, right? Bi-week. Yeah, bi-weekly. Um, in a month, they haven't defined uh, on a monthly basis how many should you uh, drink. But uh, this is so far uh, the guidelines on what is uh, low-risk drinking. Okay. Low-risk drinking. All right. Yeah, yeah. Doc, so next question before we go to the Q&A because mm-hmm. I'm sure There'll be lots of Q and A. People yes, will ask <laughs> uh, Red Horse, which category does it belong to? What about San Miguel? How about light beer? Yeah. Can I have eight light beers because one light beer equals to two? <laughs> uh, sorry, two light beers equals to one normal mm-hmm. beer. Uh, questions like that. But doc, um, let us understand why should we, why should we be concerned? I mean, on a normal party day, like celebration day, like New Year's Eve, the, the main reason why we want to make sure we don't get drunk is we need to drive home. Yeah. And we don't want to get into a car accident, mm-hmm. getting ourselves and someone else hurt, right? Uh, but in the long term, what are the scary or really painful negative effects of uh, drinking alcohol? Okay, so number one would be, yeah, you will have difficulty in sleeping. Um, Difficult, but many people drink to sleep. That is one of the misconceptions. Okay, okay? if you do that, you will you will not have a very good sleep quality because your brain. Okay, alcohol is both a depressant and a stimulant. It first stimulates your body, Mm -hmm. then it depresses it. So that once you are drunk, once you drink enough, you get what sleepy. You oh yeah, that that just happens to me. Yeah, Yeah, but. Before that happens, I'm sure you are one talkative guy or gal. <laughs> okay? So it's both a stimulant and a depressant. So if it is a stimulant and you already drank a lot, right? And you are so drunk, then you just uh, try to doze off. Your brain would be so active that you won't be able to go into deep sleep. Or that part of sleep where your body actually regenerates and give you... a uh, uh, oh. Good quality sleep. So your sleep would only be superficial. Oh, that's true. Because if you drink heavily and you fall asleep, the next day when you wake up, it's it's not a great feeling. Yeah, it's not a great feeling. It's not and, a great uh, feeling. Yeah, you, you don't say I I feel rested. You will yeah, never say exactly. that you feel rested. Okay, so that's okay. one immediate side effect. Okay, aside from being dehydrated, of course. Mm. So next would be you get your liver damage. Okay, so you get what fatty liver. Why? Because alcohol. Is one of the high calorie uh, drinks that we have, and it gets stored in what? In fats. And it uh, makes our liver create more fat. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um, in that sense, now that will damage your liver. If your liver gets too fatty, uh, you'll have fatty liver disease. And once you have fatty liver disease, if you don't do anything, that will progress to liver cirrhosis. So, liver cirrhosis is just. Uh, another term for um, hardening of the liver. Okay. Now, once your liver hardens, yeah, that's why that's the time you get complications. You get uh, jaundice or your eyes yellow. Your skin uh, becomes yellow. Your pee becomes um, pea colored. Mm. Yeah. So, 
uh, those stuff. And once you have uh, liver cirrhosis, that will progress to hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. Okay, so that's how alcohol messes up with your liver. Also, it messes up with your immune system. Oh, okay? wow. Okay. Why? Because your the immune system is highly concentrated in our gut. That is, the gut is where the most of the uh, lymph nodes are located. Okay, why is it located there? Because uh, we eat food, right? The outside environment, mm. it's definitely uh, packed with bacteria. Oh. So our body has to fight off these invaders so that um, we won't get infected. So when we eat, yeah. Our lymph nodes, our immune system is ready, is there to fight off the, the bacteria that oh, we ate that. along with food. Okay? okay. So if you drink alcohol, alcohol is an antiseptic, so you will kill off everything. So oh. you will kill off your, uh, you will damage your lymph nodes, the immune cells uh, as well. Okay. And yeah, it destroys the lining of your stomach wow. and your intestine as well. So it gets damaged. Okay. So that's what. And of course, you, increase, you also increase your risk for what? Esophageal cancer, gastric cancer, colon cancer. Wow. Okay? So those things. Then, um, yeah. What else? There are so many detrimental effects of alcohol. Um, also, another um, misconception is alcohol is good for the heart. No, it's not. Um, alcohol will increase your risk for high blood pressure. They always say red wine is like good for your heart. So it's actually the red skin in the wine. Yeah, it's the... the it's not the alcohol in the wine. Yeah, it's, it's the grapes. The, it's the grapes. You want that? You want that polyphenols that's good for your heart? Yeah. Get Simply Nature Pipa Plus. Yes. The plus is for grape skin polyphenols. So it's what's really good for your heart without the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, liver is something like uh, something that we don't realize is so it's, serious. It's always taken for granted. Taken for granted. <laughs> but uh, doc, I, I uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, the liver is like one of the most important organs. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one one reason is because if your liver is damaged, you can't take medicine. Yep. Um, and once your liver fails, the other two major organs follow your kidneys and your heart. Okay, because of the how the circulatory system is uh, is designed. Okay, so um, it's very important that your liver you take care of your liver. Although yeah, your liver can regenerate really fast. It's one of the highly regenerative organs in our body. That's good news. Yeah, that's good news. It's uh, it's it, it detoxifies a lot of things in our body. So if you damage your liver, your body's capability to, to detoxify your blood will go down and you might get uh, poisoning yeah. from that. Okay? I, I once met a person uh, who had a liver index of 400 and that person wanted to take PIPA tablets. Mm -hmm. So she was warning me that, you know, if I take paracetamol, it might kill me because my yeah. liver index is so yeah, high. Yeah, yeah. And that struck me. It just means that when your liver is damaged, it's going to be hard to treat you for any illnesses yeah, because... because yeah. You can't take drugs. Because, yes, definitely. you can't take yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's very serious, guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't overlook it. And I, I know that when your liver is damaged, life is not worth living. It's like uh, you feel terrible all the time. Mm -hmm. right? um, I have seen a lot of liver cirrhosis patients back when I was an intern, interning in uh, in Saint Luke's. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of uh, liver cirrhosis patients that I have seen already, and it they are in and out of the hospital. It's a slow, gruesome death. Ah. Okay. But at the end of the day, yeah, you won't. It's very difficult for you for your body to recuperate because you get complications from the Everything. from the effects of the liver failure. Because once wow. your liver fails, two organs follow: your kidneys will fail, your heart will fail. But at least in a heart attack, you you are gone in like fifteen it's minutes. Fast, but here in this setting, it's not heart attack. Okay, it's heart failure. Wow. Okay. What's the difference between heart failure and heart attack? Okay, heart attack is just uh, you well, know um, the the. You, Seizure. You, have, you have the heart has muscles, right? Uh, and you have blood vessels supplying that yes. heart muscle. Yeah. So one of the blood vessels that supply the heart muscle gets blocked. Okay. So the heart muscle dies. That's heart attack. Okay. Okay. In in heart failure, the ability of your heart to pump blood goes down. Oh. So you that, don't die immediately. You don't die immediately. Wow. So it's it's, it's a, a slow gruesome, it's death. A slow death. It's a slow wow. death. So slow gruesome death. Uh, in a Q and A, I'm sure someone will ask because. Many of you are maybe frightened right now. <laughs> if you have liver cirrhosis, can it be reversed? How do you treat liver cirrhosis? Ask that during the Q and A, uh, so that we can get some real examples, right? You will give us some some more details, and uh, we'll show you. 
Uh, the good news is uh, the, li- the, the patient with the liver index of 400, yeah, after taking tablets for one month, it dropped to 40. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's <laughs> like, uh, we, we reversed the whole yeah. uh, liver condition. So. Yeah, that's the thing with uh, liver. If it, even if it gets damaged, you know, just do the right thing. I mean, just have to live healthily, stop hurting your liver, uh, take the proper supplements, then it can easily regenerate, <laughs> okay? That's the good thing about liver. I like uh, for the kidneys. For the kidneys, if it gets damaged, oh, it says it's liver. very hard to regenerate, very hard to heal. So that's why people end up, you know, going on dialysis eventually. But for liver, as long as, it, as, long as you don't get into the liver cirrhosis stage, there's still hope for you. All right. So uh, ask all these medical questions in our next segment, which is the Ask Me Anything segment. But I hope you enjoyed today's uh, short discussion, although we went a bit longer when yeah. we started to talk about the liver. But, you know, I think it's so important to know what it means to drink responsibly and what is moderate drinking. So today, Dr. Johnson has shared with us what is one drink, right? One can of beer is one drink. For guys, no more than four cans in a day, no more than 14 cans in a week. So you can't say four a day, that is 20. <laughs> uh, 28. 28, no, right? You can yeah. only drink 14 cans in, in a week. week. All right, and for ladies, it's uh, three and seven. Uh, seven, seven. seven. Three yes. and seven. So basically, if the ladies drink on two days, three, three, they should stop for the week already. Yeah, they should stop for the week already. All right. And uh, I hope that's clear guidelines for everyone. And for all the wives and girlfriends out there, uh, just show this video to your husband and tell him he's drinking too much. Too much. Yes, this is <laughs> the right? proof. This, this is, is your, the proof. This is you, can tell him, you can tell your husband, I'm not going to stop you from drinking. Just don't drink more than this amount. Yes. All right. Yes. Because I want you, because I love you and I want you to be healthy. So uh, let's go to the questions now. Uh, the Ask Me Anything segment. Let's go. 